Hey guys, we're back. This is our final session of the Cat Behavior Summit. My name is Anna Skaya. I'm the CEO and founder of Base Buzz, the cool kitty DNA company that you guys all know and love. And I'm just here for a second. Um, I'm here to introduce Samantha. So I've seen Samantha lots and lots of times on different videos. Um, Samantha works for Best Friends Los Angeles. Samantha, what is your exact role there? I think you're a director. Is that correct? Well, I was the cat behavior and enrichment lead for about oh. years, and then I transferred into more of a marketing communications position, but I'm still their cat behavior expert for best. We're friend. so lucky to have you. We've had such incredible cat behavior experts on. So, you know, you're just coming in, uh, joining this incredible group of people. So I have my little buddy over here. He just woke up from my mat. Oh, no. oh, so look, he, he's actually paying it. Oh, there you go. That was the end of that. Uh, I just wanted to show you that I'm very much engrossed in cat behavior. Um, I, this whole weekend, I've learned so much about it. And um, I'm here to participate in a trivia. Who does not love trivia? Trivia is my favorite, especially when it comes to cats. So without further ado, um, guys, Samantha is joining us from Best Friends Los Angeles. You guys have all heard of Best Friends, an organization that does an enormous amount of work. Uh, we've been friends with Best Friends for a few years. Um, it's an org that we, we, I personally have a lot of respect for as an organization. Base Buzz really loves you guys. Um, so I can't think of anyone better than a local group like you to close out the summit for us. Um, I wanted to just say one more thing for all of you that, uh, that are coming on right now and thinking, ha, oh, why should I be here? It's Sunday. I'd rather be having a quarantini, which you can also do. Um, <laughs> at the end of this uh, one hour super, super fun event. Uh, we are giving away a whole year's worth supply of Pretty Litter, another local LA company that we know and love. Um, so if you know Pretty Litter, uh, it's an amazing litter that doesn't clump and that has a health and wellness aspect. So you can tell you, oh my God. I know, he just did that as, <laughs> if, as if on cue, he just jumped onto my shoulder, like ready to go. Are we watching this? Can everyone, oh, okay. okay. Back to Pretty Litter. I, I love it. I think it's an incredible product. If you guys haven't checked it out, please check it out. We're going to give away a whole year's worth supply to one person. One person. Uh, so stick around. We're going to spin the Wheel of Fortune um, and pick. Okay. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I want to get ready for this uh, for this fun little game. So uh, and you, first of all, can you please introduce whoever is sitting in your hands? <laughs> okay. This precious baby He's looking, oh, he's so full of love. This is Ant-Man, like the superhero uh -huh. Ant-Man. Oh yeah, I love he's, that. He's six weeks old. He was found um, at one day old and he was covered in ants that were eating him <gasps> because he was just cold and he had no mama and he was, they didn't think he was going to make it. And uh, Good Samaritan brought him to Best Friends Kitten Nursery. He's so sweet, you guys, he's kissing me. They bought, brought him to Best Friends Kitten Nursery where we put him in an incubator on oxygen, on fluids. And that was when he was one day old. And now like he's got a good tummy and he's perfectly oh, wow. healthy. And in two weeks, so I've been fostering him. I've been bottle feeding him since he was two days old. And in two weeks, he'll be available for adoption. Look at, look at, oh. So, hey, so, Los Angeles, hey, LA. Uh, best friend Los Angeles has Ant-Man. Ant-Man looks adorable. I love the way kittens smell. Like I just imagine oh, how he smells yeah, just he like smells. delicious. It's so, um, right. so, you know where to find us. Best Friends LA or Base Buzz. Uh, yep. Send us a note. Let us know. We're, we're giving away Ant-Man. And without further ado, Samantha, I'm going to bring us back to you. Thank and you I'll see you guys that. in like an hour or so um, to, for the All big right. giveaway. I'll see you. Okay. Exciting giveaway. Bye. Bye, Anna. Well, hello, everyone. I am Samantha Bell. Um, this is Ant-Man, as you heard, and he's going to be here for part of the presentation because, you know, then you don't have to look at my face the whole time. You can look at this cute little face. So I want to thank Face Paws and Anna and everyone here for being a part of this and for asking best friends to be a part of it. I'm so proud to represent my organization. I've been with best friends for 
oh, about seven years and even more as a volunteer before that. I was a volunteer in their kitten nursery in Los Angeles. And then I became a cat caregiver where I was cleaning and feeding and medicating all the cats. And from there, I moved into the cat behavior lead where I was ensuring that every cat in our facility was feeling their happiest, whether it was uh, the best cage to put them in, put them with other cats, without other cats. Should they be on a corner? Should they be you know, sheltered from the public walking by? What do they need to help them feel their best? Because when a cat feels their best, that's when they find a home. So uh, that was my job and um, I absolutely loved it. And I still work for best friends. I just moved into more of a marketing position, but I'm still with the cats because I foster and I represent best friends as their cat expert. So if you want to learn more about best friends, you can go to bestfriends.org. And from there, you can just, you can look for adoptables in any of our cities. We have uh, shelter partners around the country, over 4,000 shelter partners and rescues and foster organizations that, that we work with. And there's bound to be one in your city if there are 4,000 all over the country. So find an organization near you that works with best friends and do you know volunteer donate foster especially foster right now fostering is amazing i mean look at this i have this guy all day just and he's snuggly and he's so sweet so fostering is one of the greatest things you can do so i'd love to encourage everyone to foster before we get started um so um i think we're going to start with trivia this is just a fun little trivia and i have a poll and I'm going to send, I'm going to allow the panelists to vote and I'm going to launch the poll. Um, it is called Cat Trivia. And I'm going to launch the poll now. If it doesn't work, let me know. Uh, I've never tried this before, but we have 10 questions. Some are true and false, some are multiple choice. And we're just going to play this little trivia. And then we're going to go over the answers because they're going to help us understand cat body language. So here is the poll in progress. 143 of you go ahead and vote. And when I see the majority of you have voted, then we will put the results up on screen and we won't know if you got it wrong. So don't feel ashamed. We don't know who got it right or wrong. It'll just say the percentage that got it right or wrong. So don't worry. And some of them are super easy and Ant-Man saying, go team, go trivia. Yay. So one person has voted so far. There's 144, oh Ant-Man. I don't know if you guys can see him right now, but he is a ridiculously cute baby. I don't know if you can see me while you see the trivia or not, but someone said they can't see the poll to vote. Hmm. I, um, 50 people have voted, so I think most people can see it. Does anyone know in the comments? Oh, it popped out. Base pause is saying that the poll pops out. So maybe sometimes you know when it pops out and then it's behind your screen, like minimize your whatever you're looking at. And I bet that poll is behind it. Doing a poll, doing a poll. 90 people are done. 90 people are done. Yay. I've got other cats here too, you guys. I have six cats right now. Three of them are mine. <laughs> Three of them are not. This guy's gonna be somebody's cat soon. Maybe one of you. Oh, it'd be so great if one of you guys adopted him because I know all of you care about cat behavior. Oh, that'd be wonderful if one of you wanted to take this little bug at home. He's good with other kitties too. Hi. Ah. <laughs> oh, life is fun with a foster kitten. Oh yeah, someone said there's something on the wall and someone said I think it's a clock. It is, it's one of those cat clocks. <laughs> it's a cat clock. <laughs> and we have so many earthquakes here that that thing, it always like stops because of the earthquakes. I think. But it's on right now. We haven't had an earthquake in a little bit. Let's see your other cat. Here's one here. There's Packard. 
He is deaf. Oh, we've got 127. So I'm going to give it 30 more seconds and then we'll talk about the results. This is Packard. Oh, hi, honey. He's deaf. Oh, he's a good boy. And he raises my foster kittens for real. Like when they don't have a mom, he grooms them and oh, he is wonderful. He is so chill. He loves everyone he meets here. Let's see, do you want to groom the baby? See? He's just, he's an angel, that cat is an angel. So we've got uh, 15 more people that we're waiting on. And there are other cats that I'm gonna bring in too. Come here, you wanna come here, Johan? Come here. Yes, 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 yes. All right, it's been three and a half minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. Okay, so poll is now closed. So I think you should see the results on the screen. True or false, cats' collarbones are not attached to their skeletons. That is true. Isn't that crazy? Like, you know, our collarbone is attached to our skeleton. Cats are not, and that's why they can fit through. So someone said they can't see the results there. Hopefully you can now. I just pressed something. Yes, good. There they are. Thanks. Yay. I, you guys are wonderful. I, lo I, I love these little comments. Um, the cat's collarbones are not attached to their skeletons. That is true. Their collarbones are just floating. So that's why they can fit through narrow spaces because their collarbones just go in. Isn't that crazy? So uh, a lot of you got that right. Oh, this one, everybody's good at it. You guys have been paying attention all weekend. So what can you do during the day to help your cat sleep better at night? Keep them active. The more you play with them during the day, the better they're going to sleep at night. They have that instinct and drive to hunt and catch and kill and jump and bite and scratch. Let them do all of those things. Help them do all of those things with the appropriate cat act tools with the wand toys and the kicking toys and the biting toys. Give them the opportunity to do that during the day and they will feel so satisfied with their life that they will sleep well at night. Why do cats or kittens attack your ankles? Boredom. Like I said, cats have to attack things. It is in their DNA. It's in their instincts. They need to attack. They have to scratch. They have to bite. So um, you want to make sure that you're giving them something to scratch and bite. Give them, as soon as they start to like want to bite your hands or your ankles, that means they're in the mood to play. And instead of just shooing them away or pulling them off, if they want to play, so play with them and give them that wand toy, give them that kickeroo something because let them scratch and bite. So they're doing it because they're bored. Um, which species is able to make more vocalizations, dogs or cats? Cats, that is correct. And I put down the exact number over here to share with you because it's crazy. So cats, so dogs have about 10 vocalizations. Cats have over a hundred. So cool. I love it. Um, okay. True or false? Hissing is a sign of aggression. I'm so happy to see that the majority of you put false because hissing does not mean they're aggressive. It means they're feeling uncomfortable. It means they're feeling a little nervous, scared, afraid. That's what that hiss is. So when you think about all of the things a cat could do if they're feeling uncomfortable, they could scratch, they could bite, they could attack, but a hiss, a hiss is not aggressive. A hiss is just like when we tell a little kid on the playground, don't hit him, use your words. You know, say, I don't like this. That's the cat using their words. So when they hiss, I, I just, I feel like, oh, bless your heart. Like you are doing the best you can in this situation to control yourself and not hurt something or someone, you're just hissing. So a hiss is not aggressive. A hiss is saying, I'm not comfortable in this situation right now. And when the cat hisses, don't get upset with them for that because they made a good choice in doing that. Um, true or false, a cat's tongue is rough enough to lick clean the meat off the bone with a few licks. It is. If you see close up of a cat's tongue, it's made out of um, keratin, the same thing our fingernails are made out of. And it's in these, 
Oh, that's saying end the body language pull. So let me wrap it up. Um, so it's got a bunch of these little hooks that are made of like what our fingernails are. So if you think about it, it's like thousands of little tiny pointed fingernails and it can just rip that meat off of them. Um, but don't give your cats bones because they could have splinters. Cats whiskers are the same width as their body. And that is so they know before they get to an opening if they're going to fit through it or not. So that is that is uh, that is what those whiskers are for. It's to help them navigate through the world, and they're the same width as their body. You guys are good. True or false? It's normal for cats to sleep 12 to 16 hours a day. It is totally normal. If your cat sleeps 12 to 16 hours a day, they are not lazy. They are following their instincts. Their instincts tell them that they need to rest up so that they can hunt and catch and kill that prey. And even though there are no prey in my house that are running around, they still retain those instincts that their wild ancestors do had. So listen to that and let them sleep and they're not lazy, and then give them that opportunity to hunt and catch and kill with that wand toy. Oh my gosh, you guys, this one's so great. Which live longer, indoor or outdoor cats? Indoor cats live longer. They're much, you know, much less hazards to living indoors than there are outdoors with coyotes and traffic and bad people and just predators and everything. So indoor cats live longer, and cats that are neutered and spayed also live longer than cats that are unaltered. You guys did amazingly, and we are now done with the trivia. So we're going to head into the presentation now. Uh, let me take this poll off. So I'm, let me take a drink of water. I'm now going to start our presentation and um, you won't see me for a little bit or maybe you might see me in the corner or something, but I'm going to be sharing my screen with you so that you will be able to see this presentation because there are a bunch of photos and there are some videos and um, we're going to talk about body language. So let me share the screen right now. All right, so there's my screen. Let's get rid of Zoom. And hit present on this. Okay, so here we go. I am screen sharing. So we have reading and understanding feline body language with me, Samantha Bell. Uh, this is Johan. He is here somewhere, but this is a this is a picture of my cat Johan. He is awesome. And he is going to be in a lot of these photos, especially this photo right here. Um, I have a good friend who's a professional photographer. She's Erica Likes Cats on Instagram. And she came over to shoot my boys and she got this photo of Johan and I looked at it and I was like, this is, this is just absolutely perfect when we're talking about body language. So we're gonna kick off this session by just looking at this photo of Johan and thinking about some of the things that you see. So what are some of the things that you see about his body language? See, there's nothing that's really spectacular or exciting about it, but that's what makes it so cool. So one of the things that we see is, wait, where's enter? There. Um, he has a neutral ear position. So when we're looking at his ears, they are just sitting there where they were made on him. His ears are not forward, they're not back, they're not sideways. They're just sitting the way he was born. Like here are my ears, they're neutral. That's one thing we can look at when we see. And I'm gonna tell you what these all mean. Um, his eyes, look at his eyes. His pupils are normal size. They're not dilated, they're not constricted. Normal size pupils, great. His eyes are also relaxed. That's the shape of his eyes. They're not completely round and woo, you know, stressed. They're not squinted and they're not closed. They're just normal, relaxed eyes. His whiskers, we're also gonna look at whiskers when we talk about body language. So his whiskers are in what we call a neutral position. Whiskers can be in three positions. They're just there where they're just hanging and he's not using any muscles to do anything with them. Or they can be forward or the whiskers can be brought back, but they're just hanging there, he's not doing anything. And if we look at his tail, even though it's a little out of focus, you can see that it is relaxed. It's halfway up, it's curved, it's not straight up, it's not tucked, it's not puffy, it's just a normal relaxed tail. And also his body position. So these other things we were looking at were his body parts, his ear, 
eyes, pupil, whiskers, tail. And now we're gonna actually look at his body position and his body is slightly forward. So if you see like his, his head, it, it's not just over his, his shoulders, it's a little bit forward. And that, we will get into what all these things mean, but basically, when we're looking at body language, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have six different aspects that we take into account to determine how that cat is feeling. You can't just look at one. You can't go, oh, you know, his ears are blank, so he must feel blank. We, there are so many subtle signs. This little, this little guy wants to get on me. Oh, here he is, and here's our star. This is Mr. Johan in the photo. <laughs> there he is, he's amazing. He's my, he's my soul cat. And he's gonna lay down right next to us for the presentation. See, he's right, there's his tail. Um, so all these things together just mean that he's just relaxed, content, and he's interested because his body's a little bit forward. So if he had all those same things and his body was back, it would mean he's relaxed, but he's not into what's going on in front of him. He's kind of trying to get away from it. But so this is a really good sign. And when you see all of these things, this is a cat that you want to engage with. You want to reach out your finger and see, and see if they want to be pet. All right, so let's move on about me. Sorry, we have to do a little bit about Smith Bell. That is Packard, um, who was just sitting right there with me, my deaf kitty. So I've been working in cat rescue for over 20 years. Look at this baby. Oh, he's so cute. And like I said, for six years, I was the cat behavior lead for best friends. And within my first year there, which was um, 2014, I increased adult cat adoptions by 60%. And I like to say I, I don't mean I, I mean, the programs that I created that my volunteers helped with and that the staff helped with and that the adoptions team helped with, all of those together helped increase cat adoptions by 60% in one year. And that's just because there was no cat behavior department before me. There was a dog behavior department, but you know, sometimes in the rescue world, cats are second second class citizens and we didn't have a rescue or we didn't have a cat behavior department. So we got one and it all, you know, we had volunteers working together with me to, to help these cats because I could have a million great ideas to help these cats, but without volunteers to actually help me do them, you know, having hundreds of cats, I, I can only get to a couple a day, but I had these amazing volunteers and uh, we, we increased cat adoptions by 60%. Uh, for the past over three years, almost four years now, I've been a trainer mentor for the Jackson Galaxy Project's Cat Positive Pro. And if you saw Tabitha's presentation earlier, one of the ones that Tabitha Cusera is in, she's also a trainer mentor for uh, the Jackson Galaxy Project's Cat Positive Pro. And we, I don't know um, how much she got into it because I didn't see all of hers, but we are, we work with shelters around the country to teach them how to clicker train their cats to help improve the cat's behavior so that they find homes. It's amazing. Clicker training does so much. Whenever there's a behavior problem with your cat, if you can clicker train the opposite behavior, you're golden. So we'd find cats that were very shy and we clicker train them to come to the front of the cage. And uh, we just help get so many cats adopted that way. Um, I've been a cat behavior, private cat behavior consultant for about six years now. And um, in my goal always in, in cat behavior consulting is to keep cats in their homes. I wanna help people with their cats so they keep those cats in their homes and they don't have to go to the shelters. You know, I've been in, in the shelter system for 20 years. I know what it's like. We want keep, to keep the cats in their homes. Um, I'm a member of the IAABC. And like I said, the goal and all I do is to keep cats in their homes. And when I am working with shelters, it's to help get the cats adopted faster so they can rescue more and save more. It's just, that's my passion. I could talk about that all day, but we're gonna get into body language. And then those are different ways you can find me. Um, I have a website, samanthabell.org, and there is a contact me form. So if there is something I said and you didn't get a chance to ask it in here or if, if, if you want this little nugget, um, there's a contact form at samanthabell.org that uh, you can fill out and just let me know. Um, and then my Instagram is Johan and Desmond. Those are my orange boys. And then I'm on Facebook at Samantha Bell and Princess of Fur. All right, moving on to the good stuff about this presentation. So cats communicate with us. 
but they communicate very differently than we do and very differently than dogs do. Dogs have adapted their style of communication to fit humans. Like dogs have been with humans longer, so they've adapted and they communicate in ways that we understand. Um, cats have not gotten there yet and they won't in our lifetime. So cats use three types of communication, uh, vocalization, making noise, scent, either smelling things or leaving scent for others to smell and their body language. And there are two types of body language. They communicate with us in one way and they communicate with other cats also. And sometimes there are some subtle differences between how they communicate with us and how they communicate with other cats. And what we're talking about today uh, the kind of communication is body language, how they communicate to us, and how we should communicate back to them to keep them as happy as they can be. So body language is just like what you think. It's nonverbal communication. Um, they can't tell us what they're feeling, what they want. So we have to read their body language, their thoughts, their feelings, and their intentions are expressed through physical behaviors. And um, as a former Disney girl, I, I worked for Disney for many, many years. Uh, I had to include Ursula because whenever I hear the word body language, I have to think of um, Ursula for don't underestimate the importance of body language. Ha! So why is understanding cat body language so important? It sounds dramatic, but it saves lives. If you understand what your cat wants by reading its body language, you are going to keep that cat. You're not going to, you know, try to find another cat home for the cat or take it to a shelter. And also, whatever you learn, teach your friends too. Like if your friends say, oh, you know, my cat is doing this and it's biting me and blah, blah, blah. Use, use your cat behavior knowledge to help keep cats in shelters and also use it to help shelters. If you understand what that cat is saying, you can help it find the appropriate home. You can help the, the people that work in the shelter find the best placement. You know, actually, I think this cat doesn't do well on the corner with the door opening all the time. I, I can tell she's nervous when the door opens. This guy climbing me. <laughs> it's hard to focus, but um, so understanding cat behavior honestly saves cat's lives. Um, why things are the way they are. So culturally, feline, I know you've heard this in other ones, but I just, just got to say it so people remember. Culturally, cats evolved. Their evolution to become domestic happened really quickly. They went from complete wild hunter to living in cities in 4,000 years, which doesn't sound fast, but it really is a quick shift in a culture of being wild to being in a house. But biologically, they haven't made that shift yet. So while they're in our homes, biologically, they are still, they still retain all those wild animal instincts. So in 4,000 years, there's been no change in their senses and their brain, their emotions, instincts, their digestive system, and their body language. So because it's not something that's super obvious to us, the way dog body language is, that's why we're, that's why we're here. Um, what to look for and interpret. So this is what we're going to talk about. We have four subjects today. Body movements, body parts, body position, and then like their posture and facial expressions kind of goes into one bucket. So starting out with body movements. When the cat is rubbing around your legs, they're rubbing their head. We call it bunting, but that's like head butting. And if they're up on their tiptoes, that is affection. That is a cat being affectionate. That's pretty obvious right? We'll get into more, more uh, nitty gritty stuff, but we'll start out with a fun one. So rubbing, bunting, tiptoes are affection. I'm giving affection. So when you see a cat that is needing and they're not, it's not a kitten on their mama, um, an adult or a teen cat that is needing, or like we say, making biscuits, uh, that is a cat that is content. They're remembering when they were their happiest, their first happy moment of, of being alive is a baby nursing on their mama and they do that, they nurse on the mama to help the milk, to help the milk production come out. And so that that to them is, is feeling safe and content. So when they're making biscuits, they're content. Um, now let's talk about butts. <laughs> It's so weird. I'm talking about butts to 150 people. So when a cat puts their butt in their in your face, that is such a great honor. 
And you should feel so proud. Even if it is gross, it's something to feel really proud about because that means they trust you. And there are two theories as to why butt presentation means that a cat trusts you. It could be because when they are babies, that's where mama cleans them and she helps them to go to the bathroom by grooming that area. So that's also a really happy moment for them. And if they present their butt to you, they're thinking like, oh, like mama who cared for me so I can trust them because they care for me like a mama. That's one reason. And the other reason that it means they trust you is because that is a very sensitive, dangerous area for them. And they're not gonna put that right up in something that is going to hurt them. So that's another reason too, is because it's a sensitive protected area. So either way, you're watching TV, you have a cat butt in your face. I know it's gross and you push them to the side, but let me tell you, it is an honor. Um, and I say this all the time to, you know, to people and they're like, is it, is it real? I'm like, it is, but in the face is good. There's Packard joining us again. Um, and then elevator butt. Sometimes you, when you pet them, their, their back, their hips might raise up and that is an invitation. And if it is a, a female cat, it is an invitation to the male for mating. If it is not in that situation and you're petting them or they walk up to you and put their butt in the air, that is an invitation for interaction and petting. So those are both good things. Butts are good with the kitties. Um, so there are a lot of body movements that have multiple meanings. And this is one of the main points I want to make is that there are so many different things to look at to determine what their body language means. It can't be just one thing. For example, if a cat rolls over, it could mean they're happy and playful, or it could mean they're fearful. How do you know the difference? You have to look at everything else too. So just one thing, just rolling over doesn't tell you. But for example, if you look at that drawing, that cat rolling over is obviously happy and playful because the eyes are soft, the ears are up, and the paws are just at a very relaxed state. Um, so, so everything has just so many components to the overall what they're telling you. Another thing is biting. They could bite you because they're play biting, which is just, I'm a fierce predator and I kill my prey, <laughs> and they're having a great time. So when they bite you, it's not always because they're upset, but sometimes it is. It's because they're annoyed. It's a warning sign. Or if you haven't listened to their warning, they're upset because you haven't listened to their warning. So biting can be three different reasons. Um, and you have to look at what came before the biting to determine, you know, why they bit. So lip licking can either mean sometimes it's cats that are nauseous. If you see them licking their lips a lot, it could be nauseous, could be anxious. It also could be that they just ate and they're just cleaning their little mouth off. So those are, you know, they're just so many meanings to body language that it's hard to, to say that one thing means one thing. And then there's also over grooming and under grooming. If your cat is grooming too much where you're seeing bald spots, it could be because they're stressed. It could be because they're bored or it could be because there's pain in that area. Sometimes they're grooming it. That grooming feels good to them. It's a self-soothing mechanism. And they could be soothing either because they're stressed or they're painful or they're just bored or under grooming. They're not grooming because they're painful. You know, it hurts to bend that way or something. Um, over grooming and under grooming, you know, if, if it's not, if they don't seem stressed, that's when you want to take your cat to a vet. Hi, buddy, how are you doing? Record. Okay. Moving on to body parts. So with body parts, we have ears, eyes, whiskers, and tail. These are the four parts of a cat's body that will tell you so much information. So whenever you're trying to figure out what they're saying, look at all four. Ears, eyes, whiskers, and tail. Let's start with ears. Here's that picture of Johan again. His ears, they're just normal. He's interested and he's relaxed. This next kitty on the right those airplane ears, that is a cat when their ears face out. So look at the airplane and facing out. Look at both of those. They're both unsure. So as you can see, the airplane ears, unsure and nervous. Facing out is unsure and confident. Basically, the difference is facing out means they're unsure. If they're flat, they're trying to be smaller. So they're unsure and nervous. If they're not flat and they're trying to be bigger, they're unsure and confident. Do not 
interacts with the cat whose ears look like this. That is a cat who's not sure about its situation and is not afraid to hit you or hurt you in some way. Um, so watch out for ears facing outwards. And then ears that are totally flat is a cat that is absolutely terrified usually, this cat for sure, with the dilated pupils. His ears are back. Um, he's trying to, to become invisible. He's just like, I'm trying to be as small as I can. So those ears are all the way flat. So when you're looking at these cats of them, which one of those can you interact with? Only Johan. That's the only one, just interested in relaxed ears. If he's nervous, if they're unsure and confident, terrified, these are not cats that want to interact. So you want to just say a kind word to them and give them their space. Now we're looking at eyes. We have good old Yo-Yo. Again, that's what I call my Johan, Yo-Yo. He has neutral eyes. We're gonna look at, at pupils and about what the shape of the eyes are. So his eyes are neutral pupil. His pupils are normal. His eyes are normal, just relaxed. He's just existing. And then we look over here, this poor kitty from the last slide and those pupils are dilated. When the pupils are dilated, no matter what, it means that they're trying to take in more information. They're opening up those, they're trying to see as much as they can, maybe make the room lighter, maybe be able to see, you know, further on the sides on their peripheral vision. They're just really trying to take in as much information as they can because they're not sure about what is going on. They're just like, oh, I want to, I got I gotta see everything. And then they're the constricted pupils. These are cats that are laser focused on something. Could be positive, could be negative, could be laser focused on that toy that they're about to pounce on, or it could be laser focused on another cat that they're about to attack. But that constricted pupil means they're super focused. And then this cat, we're gonna say it's blinking. Can't tell, it's just a photo of its eyes closed. But um, when the cat blinks, we all know that that means that they trust you. They're able to close their eyes because they feel comfortable in their surrounding. They don't think that anything is going to get them. Whereas this poor cat with the dilated pupils does think that something's going to get it. You have to remember cats are both predator and prey. And at any moment they can feel like one or the other. So this cat with the dilated pupils feels like prey. This cat that's blinking is not worried. It doesn't feel like prey at that moment. So of these guys, which ones would you want to interact with? Johan and the squinting kitty. Um, if that cat is trying to take in as much information as it can, it's not the time to interact with it. Leave, you know, give it its space. And same with a laser cat, a laser focused cat, even if it's just a toy that it's about to pounce on, let it do its thing. Always let them call the shots. Let the cat, if it's showing you that it's interested in something, let it be interested in that. You know, sometimes the cat's playing and people go, like, oh, but I wanna, I wanna hug it. And now it's mean because it doesn't want to be hugged, but no, they were, they're focused on one thing and they're trying to feel like predators. Where are you going, Packard? He's late, but we still got Johan, he's right here. Can you see him? He's lying here next to me. Um, he's, my, he's my buddy. All right, next. Whiskers, I love whiskers. So whiskers can be in three different positions. When we look at Johan's, his are neutral. Like I said, they have muscles here and his relaxed whiskers are not using the muscles. They're just doing nothing. They're just existing. So that means he's just relaxed and existing. Um, look how cool that photo is of the kitten, of the cat with the interested forward whiskers. So you will see this when you have a toy that's like a really, you know, waving around kind of a toy or something, you can just watch their whiskers go forward. And that's because they're focused. And it's sometimes I've heard people say that it's like, you know, how sometimes when you're focused, we might like purse your lips a little bit. Um, it's sort of the same thing. Those muscles are kind of going like mm, bringing those whiskers forward. And a cat that puts its whiskers back again is a cat that's trying to look smaller. And that is a cat that's fearful. Um, who can we interact with? Once again, my little Johan. Um, if a cat is super interested in something or it's trying to disappear, it doesn't want to interact with you. Let Give it its space once again. But with those ones, he's so cute. Um, okay, now we've got tail. All right, so let's, I have to move this little thing so I can see. If you look in the top left, there are a bunch of different 
tail positions. We've got friendly is a tail up. And I always say, think of it like a little flag. If your cat has a tail up, it's like waving a little flag of interact with me. I'm here. Check it out. They want to be seen. If a cat doesn't want to be seen, like these cats here, they're going to tuck it in because they're like, and if it's relaxed, it's kind of sometimes in between like this cat that's half master down, um, tentative, curious, relaxed. They're just not sure which one they are. So they're not going to be like, hey, look at me, but they're also not hiding. They're just kind of in between. Come here. You want to sit with me? Jackie. Um, Packard is one whose tail is always up, this kid. See? There it is. Um, uh, so, and then if it's all puffy, that means they're ready to go. Either ready to fight, ready to attack something. That's not a cat that you want to interact with when the tail looks like that. And agitated is the flicking tail. And I know all of you know this, but sometimes dog people don't. Um, oh, the cat's wagging its tail. You yeah, know, <laughs> it is wagging its tail, but it doesn't mean the same thing as a dog. It means it's got so much energy that it's kind of like releasing the energy through the tail. And that is definitely not when you want to interact with a cat whose tail is, is flipping around. Um, so then there's this cat here who has the top right cat with the half master down. And then the cat with the tail that's tucked, that's a cat that's very scared. It's not only trying to hide, like it's just, it's so nervous that its body is just very tense. Um, and then we're gonna look at this little video here of it's sort of in between tails. So this is Packard, my, my big gray deaf boy. And this is Lily, who I cat sit for. And I'm actually cat sitting for her right now. She's in a different room, but um, I cat sit for Lily. And this is her first time meeting Packard. And it's just fascinating to watch her tail. So we're just going to watch her tail and then we'll talk. Wait, go back. Hold on. Go back. I'm trying to press play on it. There. So Lily's checking out Packard. His tail's right. Just want to with Lily. So she, she won't bother you at all. He she's happy. Because he's chubby. He's a chubby. Look at that tummy he has. She hisses. Okay, mama. And her tail kind of goes Come here, Lily. halfway. Come here. It's got a little flick. Come and then here. I say hi to her. And it goes back Come up because she hears a voice she likes. So it goes back up. She's interested. So she's she's low to the ground. Ears. She's crouched, making All herself her smaller. Is good. She's just nervous. Yep. I, I'm trying to talk over myself while I'm good. talking in a video. I should have just gotten rid of the audio in there. Um, so what you see when we watch this video is Lily's tail is up because she's a ha she's a happy cat. She's also nervous because she's never seen Packard before. So you see that tail go partially down and then it's got a little flick in it too because it's like, oh, I'm feeling a lot of feelings right now. Um, it's not it's not a time that she wants to pay attention to me. She's very focused on Packard. So I'm, I'm giving her space, but then I say, Lily and her tail whoop, goes right back up. So it's just interesting to watch. You just can see all of her emotions through her tail there. Um, it's not in presenter mode anymore. Let me see. Hmm. Do you guys see how it's not in presenter mode anymore? I don't know why. Bummer. Well, oh well. Um, so now we're going to look at some more tail things. Um, over here, this is Desmond. This is another one of my kitties. And he saw something that spooked him. And his tail puffed. He normally has a tail that looks like this cat down at the bottom for tapping tip. And he saw something and he was alarmed. And he poofed up. And you'll see the cats do that. And you can see that the hair on his back puffed up. It's just like when we get goosebumps, you know, all of um, the hair, just, it makes it go up like that. So that means they're, they're feeling alarmed when it's like that. Um, and then here is a cat whose tail is quivering. I like this little video. <laughs> And when you see a cat with a quivering tail, that cat is super happy and super excited. Um, I've had people who've come over and 
my cats do that when people come over and do, 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 and the tail goes up and they they ask if they're spraying and um that is what cats do sometimes when they spray but it also means that they're so happy and so excited and another thing that cats do is they tap just the tip of their tail and like this cat asleep was probably I'm guessing was just like do a little tail tap and that just it's content it's not the same as a thrashing tail it's just the little tip of it going and that's a cat that's content and then we have cats with the tails that are thrashing or twitching and here's a great video to watch look at that orange boy So in that video, he has got a lot going on. He's looking at that white cat. He's not sure if he's, you know, interested or if he's upset, but his tail is flicking. So of these cats on here, which ones are ones that are okay to interact with? Do -do -do. Quivering and tapping tip. Not when they're alarmed and not when the tail is thrashing. Those are the ones that you want to interact with. Okay, so we have talked about body movements. We've talked about body parts. Now we're going to talk about body position. I like this one. I love these photos. So this, these are all taken by the same photographer that Erica, Erica likes cats. Um, on here, this first one, this was my foster. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Nigel, he was blind and uh, he was a street cat living on the streets of LA blind. And uh, we took him in and I fostered him. I fostered him until I found him the perfect home and he has the perfect home now. But as you see in this photo, this is perfectly centered. If you look, his head is on top of his shoulders, which are on top of his feet, straight up and down. That's a cat that is just comfortable. He's not super interested. He's not nervous. He's just living his life. Eh, I don't, you know, nothing really going on. He's comfortable. Now here's Johan again forward. Johan loves people. Oh my God. He loves people. He's just, you come over and he, he's all over you. As you can tell by the photos, this is Erica that he didn't even know. And he was just like, I'm interested in you. So as you can see, his shoulders are ahead of his paws and, you know, and his, his body, then his shoulders, then his paws, because he's very interested. And then, then there's Desmond. This is my other kitty. And when people come over, a lot of times Desmond is nervous around people that new people that come over. And so you can see how his, his feet are here, but his shoulders are back and his head is in because he's feeling uncomfortable. And that was when Erica first went to, to take his photo, but he's not too uncomfortable though, because like I said, you have to look at all those different aspects. His ears are okay. His eyes are okay. His tail's okay. His body's just back a little bit. So he's not upset. He's just like eh, a little uncomfortable, but then Erica got a true stick and said, maybe we can take a photo with the true stick. And you know what he did? Oh, Packard's yelling at us. Then he all of a sudden became interested in her. So that's all it took for him to get a good photo. And his body language went from that back to the forward. So he just changed it right then and there. And that's, and you can just see everything about it. <laughs> Packard, Packard's sitting next to me yelling. Are you gonna start, you gonna start talking to everybody? He's deaf, so he has quite an interesting yell. It's like, wah. It's very cute. Um, so those are the body positions. So you can tell if a cat wants to interact with you or not by their body position, where their weight is centered. And now we're going to talk about body postures and facial expressions, which I love. I also love, I love all this stuff. This is so much fun for me. I'm having, I'm having a great time. I hope you're all enjoying this. So cats with their body postures can be either defensive or offensive. Defensive they're trying to look smaller and offensive. They're trying to look bigger. And this is going to give you so much information when you're looking at a cat, are they defensive or offensive or just neutral, you know, neutral, fine. You want to interact with them, but you also want to know, is this cat about to attack me or not? It's a great way to, to determine this. And this is especially great in the shelter setting. If you're going to interact with a cat, um, you want to make sure that cat is not on the offense. Uh, Packard is now, on his wheel. We have a cat wheel in the, in the living room. He's about to run on the wheel and it'll sound like a train going through my apartment. So if that happens, <laughs> I'll flip it around so you can see him running, but uh, that's what the noise is. So when they're trying to look smaller, they're obviously they're crouched 
and they're low like this kitty, ears back, shoulders hunched, tucked in. That's a cat that's defensive. And you'll see that a lot in the shelter, in the cages, that, that they'll be, you know, hunched and tucked in. And then a cat that's offensive is trying to look bigger, like the Halloween cat. Halloween cats, that's why they go sideways, because that's more body area, you know, for you to see. Um, and they're pilo erect, which means like that was the picture of Desmond's poofy tail. They're, they're puffed. The hair is standing up. The legs are straight. Look at those straight legs. This kitten cracks me up on here. Arched back, because that makes them look bigger. And like I said, sideways. So all of those things are cats that are trying to look bigger. And then facial expressions. So as you see here, Packard is, is relaxed. He is just looking at you and his mouth just looks like if you saw a drawing of a cat, like a cartoon, it just looks like that, just like a normal cat. Relaxed, engaged, looking at you, interested, ears are normal, eyes are normal. His face isn't really saying there's anything of note. <laughs> his brain isn't either. He's it's not the smartest, but that's what makes him so sweet. Um, fear, this part, look at that. You can just see fear in this cat's face. The eyebrows, the ears, the mouth is like, like this and the, and the little face. It's just crazy that you can actually read fear in a cat's face. And you can also read frustration. And this picture is so great because it's what we call a, like the heavy brow. So that cat is not squinting as in the I trust you, I love you, but its eyes are small and its eyes are small because it has a, the brow is down. And those are cats that are showing frustration that might smack you or, or bite you or something. That look right there is, is one to look out for. That fearful cat probably won't. But that cat, that look of frustration, she's confident. She's sitting up. Her ears are a little bit to the side, but that heavy brow right there is, is telling you that cat's not sure what it's about to do. Um, and it's interesting fact, happiness and sadness are never reflected in cat's faces. You cannot tell if a cat is happy or sad by their face. Only relaxed engagement, fear, and frustration. Those are the only three things you can read in a cat's face. So now we've talked about body movements, body parts, body position, body posture, spatial expressions. We're going to put it all together and show you how it works when you're looking at a cat overall. And we're gonna do one together. So we're gonna look at this drawing of a cat. In this drawing, the cat's ears are back and up. The pupils are dilated. The head is turned. That's something we didn't really talk about, but if you're going, if you go to pet a cat, and they flip their head back to you, that is not a good sign. They're going, what is that? You know, they're, they're not certain, that's, that's not a good sign I would stop my interaction with them at that point if they do a head flip. Um, the hair on the back is standing up a little bit and that tail is flicking. So if you look at them all together, so you could say, oh, the pupils are dilated. That's just a cat trying to take in more information. No because you got to put it all together. Yes, it is trying to take in more information, but when you put it with ears back, head turn, hair, hair is up, and that tail is swishing, this is a cat that is, a big word that we use a lot, overstimulated. That the hair up, is like, oh, it's got the hair up, and it's got the tail flicking ears back, it's looking back at you. That's a cat that is overstimulated, which means it has too much feeling going on in its body. It's just sensing too many things and it doesn't know what to do. And since they don't know what to do, oftentimes that's when they bite because they're just overstimulated. And we want to definitely prevent overstimulation. The best way is by your energy being calm, quiet, and gentle. Right now I'm being very exaggerated because I, I'm uh, inter trying to entertain you all. But normally when I'm around cats, I am so calm and so quiet and so gentle be because they feed off of our energy. Oh, hello. <laughs> what is a cat presentation without a cat in the way? Um, and then another way to prevent overstimulation is to assess their mood. Like I was gonna say, if that cat wants to play, let them play. Always let them call the shots. When you let cats call the shots, you are giving them the power and the confidence, and they're so happy about it. Let's see this handsome guy's face. See, we use you in all our examples. See how cute it is? 
Look at you, you're a model. <laughs> he's so good. He's a little annoyed. See the ears? The ears are a little bit turned where he's like, eh, I don't know about this. So I'm going to let him go. I'm going to be a good example of cat behavior, even though I just squeeze. Um, so assess the cat's mood. If that cat is feeling playful, then play with them. That's what they want. That's It is not about what we want. And it's something you have to just surrender to. And if you want to have a happy cat, it is about what the cat wants. So you want to figure out what they want. If they want to play, let them play. It's not the time to pet. There will be other times to pet. If they want to just relax, then you can try to pet them. And when you do, you always want to just offer one finger toward their face. And it does seem a little bit crazy to be like, oh, I'll put it right by their mouth. That's not what I want to do. But it, it, that's the best place. You just offer your finger to them. And if they want to, what do they do? They rub on it themselves. And they just thought, I decided to do that. I called that shot. I'm being pet right now because I want to. And they feel great about it. And I just leave my hand still and let them pet themselves. And when they're done, they're done. And you also want to stay mainly on their head. Cats' heads are not as sensitive as the rest of their bodies. But when you do this nails right here, oh, when you scratch on that, that releases so many endorphins for them. So you're not going to overstimulate them and you're going to make them feel really good if you stay on the head, just like this photo shows, just like scratching the top of the head. It's the safest place to pet him. He's getting all wild. Are you all crazy? So yeah, this is not the time to pick up Johan because he's being all... He's being all crazy. What are you doing? Are you crazy? <laughs> he is. He's been crazy. Um, watch the body language. If their ears are starting to turn or if their tail is starting to flick or if the cat is moving away from you, then just stop petting them and keep your petting brief. You always want to leave a cat wanting more. Never pet them so long that they're like, oh, I'm done with you. And then they get annoyed with you. You always want to leave them wanting more, which is, which is, you know, it's, it's tough to do, but it also, uh, it's also really, it's also really, really helpful. Look at he's crazy. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Um, I just got a text that I need to look at. You can do another 10 minutes of question and answer after your presentation. Okay. I just got notes. Um, and so that is how you prevent overstimulation. Let them call the shots and leave them wanting more, just like an entertainer. Um, so I'm gonna show you a video and I want you to guess what's going on from this video. This is, this is Packard and my other cat Desmond. And we're gonna watch it and tell me what you think is going on. Wait, let me start it over. So when we're looking at them here, they look like they are what? Fighting. Yes. They look like they're fighting. They're hitting each other. Their ears are back. But guess what? These cats are best friends. Here they are normally. Look at those little sweet nuggets. What are they doing? They are play fighting. How do you know? How do you know that your cats are okay and not actually fighting? Well, real fighting is going to be noisy. You're going to hear screams and hisses and horrible noises. But play fighting in that video, you, all you heard was a <laughs> like their little nails on the, on the ground. Play fighting is quiet. It's also great enrichment. But like we were talking about, this is not a good time to engage with them. I'm not gonna stick my hand in there. Even though they're not upset with each other, they're not upset with me, this is what they wanna do. They wanna play right now, so just let them play. That makes them happy. It's a good time to, you know, just watch them and, and take a cute video and use it in a presentation. Uh, here's another video. Let's see. Okay. In this, this is little, little Desmond. In this video, look at that face. I love my cats so much. I know you all can, can relate. Um, in this video, Desmond was, did you guys hear that? There's like a, 
a loudspeaker outside or something. This cat is doing bunny kicks. So people are like, oh, it's bunny kicks. That's the bunny kicks. That's so cute. Um, do you know that he's actually in his mind? He's killing that toy. A bunny kick is when they hold the toy and then kick it. In real, the, the wild, their instincts, they hold the mouse and kick it so that it breaks its neck. So that is a cat that is showing its wild instincts. Desmond has never seen a mouse or a rat or any prey like that. But in his mind, he's like, I got this thing, I'm snapping its neck and I'm killing it. It's like, it's crazy. But that is great enrichment for them because he really feels like a hunter that killed his prey. Also, once again, as you can guess, not a good time for petting or holding. Um, so that that is all I have right now. Um, we're going to do some Q and A. Um, like I said, if if you have questions um, that don't get answered during our Q and A, then feel free to to ask me a question. You can send it to Base Pause, and they can get it to me, or you can send it to my contact form at samanthabell.org. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. Let's see. And we should be back to me. We good? Okay, I'm gonna go to Q&A. I see 21 questions. Um, oh, I got it. Oh, this is a good one. Jeanette and Tammy. These are great. That's a great question. I love answering this question. I would love to hear more about Samantha's educational background and how and hear tips on how to follow a similar path. The, honestly, I, I wish I would have thought to answer that. So thank you for asking me that question. So my educational background <laughs> has nothing to do with cats. Um, I, in undergrad, I majored in Spanish and mass communications. And then it, I went to grad school for education to be a teacher. And then I was a teacher for many years. Um, and then uh, somewhere in there, I also worked at Disney. I was a Disney princess for many years, performing in the parades and on the floats and on the stage shows and everything. And so I, I have all these experiences, but one thing from the time I was old enough to drive myself, I would go to cat shelters to volunteer. There was one in Orlando when I worked at Disney that I would go to, and I was pretty much self-taught in cat behavior just by observing and watching and reading books and anything I could, you know, back, this was in the nineties and there really wasn't a huge amount of information on the internet or, you know, like we were just learning what email was. So I couldn't really research cat behavior, but I, I just was with so many shelter cats that you just kind of figure it out. So what I would suggest is volunteer, volunteer, volunteer as much as you can at cat shelters. Education is important. If I would have known that this is what my career path would have been, I would have gone to a different school where I could have majored in animal behavioral sciences and, you know, been a doctor of, of a vet of animal behavior. I, I would have done that had I known, but I didn't. I, my education is from working with shelter cats. And then I joined the IABC and I took every course they possibly had. I've read every everything there is online. I, I just soak up every bit of cat information there. I subscribe to every kind of email that might have a tidbit of information about cat behavior in it. And, um, and I just, it, it's working with hundreds of thousands of cats. And so when I decide, so I was volunteering, this is how I got the current position. I was working at Disney. I was actually an Imagineer. I was working in Imagineering. And in the evenings, I would volunteer in the kitten shelter at Best Friends. And I absolutely loved it. And I started realizing I loved being at Best Friends LA more than I liked being at my job. And at that point I realized, you know, I, I need to transition into this but I have no, I have no background. So I just started at the bottom as a cat caregiver. I went from this fancy office job at Disney to cleaning cat poop all day long, but I had been a volunteer. So they knew me, they knew I was trustworthy and I showed up for my shifts and I made smart decisions as a volunteer. And then, you know, they hired me at the lowest, at the bottom level. And I was only a cat caregiver for three months before I moved up to the next position, moved up, moved up. And once you're, once you have your foot in the door of the animal welfare world, you just work your heart, you know, you, you work your butt off and you put your heart into it and you can move up 
you know, the animal welfare world is just getting bigger and bigger. And it's just such a wonderful place to be with the most amazing people that, you know, they could see my passion and they just promoted me. So um, that is, that is how I got where I am is by volunteering and by starting at the bottom at 40. <laughs> so it's never too late. Let me tell you. Um, what degree do you need to have to have to be a cat behavior consultant member of IABC? You don't you don't have to have a degree. You can join the IABC as you know just just a, a member, and then you take their courses. And um, you can get certified through IABC though they do have certification. And and I would love to do that, but it's expensive, and I work in a nonprofit, so I, I you know I have to. I just have to learn what I can and I don't have all of those letters after my name, but I have thousands upon thousands of hours of working with cats in real life, in life or death situations. At, at Best Friends, we have 500 cats in, in the shelter and I was in charge of all of their behavior. And so like I went to the school of, of hard knocks, <laughs> went to the school of animal shelter, you know, I had five, 500 cats depending on me and that's how I learned and that's how I got where I am and just trying um so I hope that I hope that answered your question Jessica my tuxedo cat likes to tuck in his hands and feet does that mean he is cold so usually that is that just means they're comfortable it's it's just like um I call it loaf you know a lot of people call it loafing when they tuck it in and it, it it's one of those things that has all those multiple meanings too because it could mean that they're keeping themselves warm because all of their body is together. So they could be keeping themselves warm. They could just be comfy or they could be trying to look smaller. And I actually, this presentation that I'm doing now, I did a much longer version of it at um, Jackson Galaxy's cat camp. And in it, I had all, all kinds of other photos of where you have to guess, you know, what the cat is doing. And there was a cat that was loafing, which makes it look comfortable, but its eyes were super dilated and its ears were totally back while it was loafing. And that's a cat who's trying to look small because it's, it's tuck, tucked in. So it's, it's multiple meetings and you just want to look at the situation. So if, if your house is cold, then maybe he is trying to stay warm. Um, cats do prefer 80 to 90 degrees. They, that is what they're most comfortable at. Um, so I, I know my place is seven. I like to keep it at 72, but cats prefer like they prefer it warm. So maybe just, you know, a little blanket or they have those, um, those mats that have like a little warming thing in them if your place is cold. But if not, he's probably just doing it to have fun. Oh, Packard's running on his wheel. Let's see if I can show you. Can you see him? Packy. He can't hear me. He's deaf, but he, he likes to just, he walks on his wheel when he's hungry. And then he'll yell. You yell? I see you. I'll feed you after this. That's his, that's how he signals that he's hungry. He goes and walks on his wheel. <laughs> so cute. Okay. How did I become a cat behavior consultant? Shelters. Shelters, 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 rescues, volunteering, fostering, just and when, when you, I know I can talk about this part all day too, but when you're there at the shelter, meet everyone, talk to everyone and ask them how they got where they were. Let them know that this is what you want to do. I cannot tell you how many volunteers I've had, you know, over the seven years at Best Friends who've said, I want to do what you do. And I'm like, fantastic. Then let me give you all of these assignments to take on. And then when they go to HR, I can say, you know what, I've given them these assignments. They've shown me that they're smart and they're trustworthy and they make good decisions and they're, they're great with people. That's another thing that, that a lot of people don't think about when you're in animal behavior, you not only have to be good with animals, but you have to be good with people because who's going to solve the problem, not the animals, the people you know, getting people to adopt, getting people to work with their cats and train their cats and to, you know, get them to, you know, to cooperate with you. You also have to be really good with people. So it's people skills too. Um, one of our cats whips her tail back and forth when she's affectionate. Is this just because she's excited or overly stimulated? Well, what happens after she's flicking her tail back and forth? So if nothing ever happens, you know, if no, no bites or scratches ever happen when she's doing that, then she is a little different than most cats and her tail whipping back and forth 
is not something to be worried about, but that's something you wanna test with each cat. There are certain cats I've worked with people where I say, you know, when you pet them on the back, pet them once and see how they react to it. And if, if they don't bite you, then pet them twice. And then you just kind of keep a little mental record of how many times you can pet your cat before it becomes overstimulated. And every cat's different. Um, Johan here, if I pet him for too long, he will bite me. But he also puts his ears back and he whines. He goes mm, like that. And I know, okay, stop petting you. However, Packard, you could pet that cat for 24 hours straight on his tummy kissing him and he will never become overstimulated. So every cat has a different tolerance for handling and you just have to find out what your cat is. So in answer to your question, if your cat doesn't, oh, that means it's time, time for Q and A, we're on time. If your cat lets you pet them and their tail flicks and they don't bite or scratch you, then they're okay with it. So it's all based on what your cat thinks. I'm like slowly jumping back in here Totally um, I just want to say I learned a new word today that I did not know overstimulated I did not realize that you know you think people always say oh my cat you know they're brats they don't like to be touched no cats get overstimulated it's not that they're aloof or they're brats or, you know my cat only likes it for a minute yes they like it for a minute because they get overstimulated yeah too many their their bodies their skin it's they they feel more than we do so like if I go like this on myself Eh, no big deal. But to do it to right. a cat feels like so much more intense. Are you still yelling? <laughs> uh, Samantha, I mean, we've had some amazing lectures this weekend, but yours just tops it. I mean, I've, I've been writing down, I've been scribbling. I've been, I, I, you guys, aren't you just impressed with so much knowledge that was just pumped at us for an hour? Samantha, you're fantastic. It, it's really an amazing presentation. Thank you're clearly you. a professional. I'm not surprised that the questions that you're getting is how to become you. <laughs> because I'm thinking the same thing. Like, wow, wow, that is so much. You know, they say cats are a mystery wrapped in a question mark. Yes. So you're the kind of person that helps us, helps us unravel that mystery. I just uh -huh. want to say thank you. Thank you for being uh, such an expert and a professional in this space. I think all of us are very impressed. You just made my day. I'm, <laughs> this is recorded. I want to play that for my boyfriend. Look. Yes, it is recorded. It is recorded. Um, listen, I want to just take a minute and uh, we have one more thing to do. Uh, we've got to close this out and we're going to give away. Are we ready for a big giveaway, Base Buzz? Uh, we're ready to give away one year supply of Pretty Litter. Um, this giveaway is really cool because we are here to support local companies. Um, we are in a pandemic, so startups are having a bit of a hard time. So, hey, guys, we're all going to support each other. We're going to support companies that are small and mighty and try to make a difference in the cat's world. So um, I think Base Buzz, are we ready to spin our wheel? Oh, yes. Yes. Here's our wheel being spun. Isn't this a cool little tool? This oh is the beautiful God. thing about, you know, the world is becoming more digital. And we're looking to see who is going to win a whole year's worth supply of Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter is awesome. If you guys haven't checked them out, check out, you know, everyone has their preference for litter. Um, all right, all right, we got a winner. Corlette, Corlette at msn.org. Um, Corlette, please know that you are the winner. Um, congrats. Uh, we will be in touch. And if you haven't, uh, if you're not here to see this for yourself, we will find you. Um, I, I want to just say one more thing as we wrap up here with Samantha and everybody else on the line. Um, thank you so much to everyone who's been a part of this. This is a brand new thing. We've never done this. People were asking us these last few weeks, say hey, base boss, you're a genetics company. Why are you doing things in behavior? Well, guess what? what? Genetics and behavior are part of the same coin. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot get to know your cat better. Hashtag get to know your cat better uh, just through genetics. Behavior is the flip side of that. So if Base Buzz wants to continue being the cat health and wellness company, we can't just know about genetics. It has to be incredible, important comments like behavior, like what Samantha just taught us. Guys, I don't know about you. I'm gonna be such a better cat mom um, after this one hour. Um, and I want to end uh, with a special heartfelt 
thank you, a personal thank you to uh, Minnie, Nadia, <laughs> Kelsey, uh, Kristen. Uh, this is a former Skeeter team that have put this together. Uh, I'm so impressed with what these women have done. Uh, Base Buzz is a small but mighty and incredibly important organization. I love you all for supporting us. Go Cab Behavior. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone for joining us. Samantha, if you're still here, uh, I was just so impressed with you. Um, Thank you. Love this, <laughs> love this summit. Oh, hey, and guys, take a screenshot, take a picture. We'll see you all again, hopefully soon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Mwah. Bye.